Okay, if the uh, constant of proportionality between the number of televisions, T, and the number of households, N, in the US, United States is 12 to 5, then first we want to write an equation to represent the situation. So we know that K equals Y over X, but we don't have Y and X. We have T and N. But we know that Y is going to be our dependent value or variable, and X is our independent. So which one depends on the other? Well, we notice that televisions, the number of televisions, depend on the number of households. So we're going to go with T over N. And since that is 12 to 5, we know that we can write the equation in the form y equals kx, remembering again that t takes the place of y. So t equals 12 fifths, and x is replaced by n. Now the way we reason this out and think about it is the number of houses or households would we multiply that by 12 fifths to find the number of televisions? And it makes sense because we know that most households have more than one television. So the number of households is going to be, since the numerator is larger than the denominator, when we multiply the number of households by 12 fifths, this number is greater than the number of households, and the number of televisions ends up being greater than the number of households. So even logically wondering, you know, do we have this right, is a good idea. And yes, we do. So this is our equation. Next, we want to create a graph. Well, we have already said that the number of households is our x. And the number of televisions is the dependent variable. And now we just need to decide how to number them. Well, this is a 20 by 20 graph. So because uh, 12, the second, you know, if we double that, then it's 24 over 5, and that goes right off our graph. Um, we could go ahead and just count by ones. If we were to do that, then we go to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And for every 5 households, we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and put a point here. And then with a ruler, line up this point and 0, 0, because of course 0 households would have 0 televisions, and draw that line. We could also count every other one. So 1, 2, or I lost count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then go up by 1s. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that just makes our line be more horizontal, or well, more kind of through the middle. Uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't change the the graph of of the line itself, just the way that it looks on the graph. So we would just have to decide. I'm probably just going to go number by ones. Now, if you number by ones, you don't need to number each individual line. If I count by ones on the y's, I don't have to count. I don't have to label each individual line. But if I do put one here. Really, I'm counting by halves just to spread out the graph. So one, two, then I would have to uh, label each one. But I'm going to go by ones. Now later I'll talk more about you really haven't made an appropriate graph if you haven't used up more than half the graph vertically and horizontally. And as you can see, this does not use up more than half the graph horizontally from left to right. Um, we're not going to worry about that just right now. But the next thing we want to do is predict um, a number based on a given number. For instance, if um, let's say that uh, Best Buy or, or Walmart or somebody sells um, or has for sale um, like 108 televisions, um, how many households would that you know fit if this is a true number? So what we do is we plug that in. So it has the number of televisions, so we replace T, the number of televisions, with 108. So 108 equals 12 fifths N, and now we're solving for the number of televisions, or sorry, the number of households. And so we want to 
multiply both sides by 5 twelfths. And that, if you do that math, would equal 45. So 108 households would um, take up about 45 households. 108 televisions, 45 households. Now the other thing they could do is they could give us a certain number of households. So like if a developer, I just need this room so I'm going to get rid of this. Nope. If a developer builds a subdivision with 38 houses, about how many televisions um, can a store, if they run a special specifically for that neighborhood, you know, um, expect to sell? So the number of televisions equals 12 fifths of, I believe I said 38. Well, just make it an even 40 to make the math a little bit easier. So then the number of televisions, if you do that math, is 96 televisions. So they can give you either the dependent or the independent number and you would need to find the other one based on your equation. And really if your graph is big enough, uh, if you label it right, you might even be able to find the point on the line. But let's just back up for a minute. What if you, instead of getting a fraction, you had been giving, given a decimal? So 12 fifths is 2.4. So instead of 12 fifths, let's just say that they told you that the, or right here, instead of 12 fifths, it had said 2.4. Well, our equation would then be, well, t, I was about to say y, t equals... 2.4 n. Now that does kind of mess us up on the graphing because of course what we had done was we said for every five households there are 12 televisions. So how do we do 2.4 um, and find a point where it, where it graphs that? Um, well we could put in numbers for number of households, 1, obviously 1 times 2.4 is 2.4, and that doesn't really help us on our graph if we want integers, you know, if we want whole numbers. Um, how about multiplying it by 10? Well, that's going over 10, and we can see that that's 24, and that goes off my graph. Now, I could renumber this so that it could take care of 10 and then 24. But we can also, if we put in 5, we can see that if we do 5 times 2.4, we get 12. So if they give you a decimal, you might have to do a little more finagling in order to come up with a point that's usable. But this point is still valid, even if instead of 12 fifths, we use 2.4. And then when you plug it in here, you're doing 40 times 2.4. Or before, when we had the number over here, you just divide both sides by 2.4. And if you're using a calculator, it's actually easier with a decimal when you're using it to find unknown numbers.